not a lot of people understand the behavior of zebrafish. And if you're interested in brain function, that's a crucial uh, aspect uh, of their phenotype. If you do behavior analysis correctly, you can actually have a lot of students and you don't need to wait years and years before they can learn complicated scientific equipment, how to use them, complicated scientific procedures, steps before they can generate data. Here, behavioral analysis is relatively intuitive and easy to learn. So this way I could actually have a lot of undergraduate students uh, as well as graduate students um, getting involved in real basic research that allows them to learn about the basic principles of science, experimental design, and would at the same time allow them to even publish. So hello everyone, um, I'm a second year master's student here at the Girl Eye Lab. My study focuses specifically on housing conditions in zebrafish, so I look at how different tank sizes and housing densities affect the behavior of zebrafish. So this is a novel tank test, so it's adapted from the you know, open field tests that we do in rodent models, but for adapted for zebrafish. We usually will have two monitors set up this way, but just so you can see better, I've only set up one. And we basically present a variety of stimulus to the zebrafish in the novel test tank. And based on their responses to these stimuli, we can induce, um, figure out a whole bunch of different anxiety type questions and see how they're reacting. So you can see that we have fake zebrafish that we basically present. And based off this, the zebrafish can react to it and we can use the ethovision uh, to do a whole bunch of different behavioral parameters. So you can see I have velocity, mean, and variance, um, which is something I can't do on my own without you know, having, really, having a ruler and basically calculating by hand. So all of this is inputted into the program for me. Um, so you know, distance to bottom, distance from the monitor, the frequency, how long it's staying here, monitor one versus monitor two. So all of this behavioral data easily by a click of a button I can get and basically analyze and look at different behaviors that I wouldn't otherwise. I always tell people that the best way to study animal behavior is to actually watch the animals first because uh, the genetic mutation that we generate, the compound that we um, um, administer to the fish, the, the particular environmental stimulation we, we uh, set up, all of these things can actually have unique unexpected effects. So at the beginning we always set up uh, pioneering kind of pilot studies where, where students and I uh, watch the fish and see what they actually do. Uh, once we have an idea uh, about how they change their behavior, then we set up, for example, an observation-based system using the observer where we define behavioral uh, posture and uh, motor patterns that we, we basically uh, then measure using the observer, which basically turns the computer into a multi-channel stopwatch. And uh, uh, from there, uh, eventually, if we can figure out how to uh, measure some of these uh, parameters using uh, uh, a tracking-based system, for example, Intervision, which doesn't require someone to watch the video, uh, makes it more automated um, and, and less time uh, consuming. Then we move on to the uh, Intervision-based uh, tracking method. And basically both of these products by Nodus have us uh, accomplish uh, this. Yeah. 3.5 billion years is from zero to now. Uh, biological evolution. The last 0.4 billion years is when the two species diverged, fish versus humans. The first 3.1 billion years is common biological evolution. 3.1 versus 0.4. That's the answer. That's why zebrafish is translationally relevant.